Mr. Speaker, on this side of the house, we like to cut through the BS at least once a week. And once a week, of course, I have Marty up north on the show. Thanks for joining me once again, my man. You, you, you've been listening to the question period in the House of Commons. That is too much. That is absolutely Trudeau's new line. He uses it all the time now, Mister Speaker of this side of the house. Yeah, I, um, I'd never heard that until this week, and I think he's used it about four times this week. On he's full of shit. He's, uh, he's full of shit. <laughs> on this side of the house, <laughs> did they uh, did they predict uh, lowering of interest rates, or how about historic lows, Glenn? <laughs> As we've heard before. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, it, and and then and then, well, I mean, you know, it, it's it's his usual hypocrisy. Like, well, actually, let's talk about first of all. Let's talk about Mister Speaker. Um, you know, we in Canada just got a brand new Speaker of the House. Like, what's uh, Mister Fergus? He's been there about I don't know six weeks now. Not even six weeks. He already had to apologize. Yeah, because. <laughs> Um, you know, he, uh, he for, for your viewers, you know, in Canada, I think it's probably the same thing in the US. I mean, um, the, all the representatives elect a speaker, so of course, the speaker is a liberal, but he's supposed to be impartial. Mm -hmm. That's you know, he tries to be impartial uh, to, to hold up the decorum of the house. He has a vote only once in a while if there's an absolute tie, so it's very rare that the speaker ever uses his vote. So, he's, but he's supposed to be impartial. And this speaker put together a video, a nice video of him in the chamber wearing his suit, whatever his clown outfit, and uh, and then they showed it at a at a liberal fundraiser. Like he was he was presented at the liberal fundraiser remotely, and he and he spoke. Well, that's not impartial, and uh, and that's a big breach of protocol. And and he was asked to. Um, he, well, he hasn't been in the house. All week. Well, it's, so, it's almost so as if somebody week, should stand up and speak for about an hour about decorum in the house. I don't know if that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think he did that. He did that only like a few weeks ago. And then here he, he is in breach of his own decorum. Absolutely. You know, and so um, so he hasn't been in the house. So there's a. I, 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 there's a, I mean, there's more than one speaker. Well, sorry, there's one speaker. There's probably six or seven deputy speakers because the the house and other business, you know, is, it, it's 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 time consuming. So then we had um, a deputy speaker for most of this week, all of this week, and then he did something today too. He kicked out a conservative MP out of the House of Commons because a conservative MP. Um, basically called out Trudeau as a liar. He said, you know, Prime Minister Trudeau, you promised some relief to farmers via the carbon tax relief and and you didn't deliver and you and and you're a liar. And as soon as he used the word liar, everybody's like, ooh, ooh, ooh you know, whatever, point of order, point of order. And uh, the speaker asked him to withdraw that comment because I guess you can't call an MP a liar. Uh, you can't, I went and looked, there's a long list. You can't call an MP a liar, a fraud, uh, a windbag. Um, <laughs> there's a few, you know, and, and, and anyways, why don't we get he, into the clip? Because with... I have the clip here. Oh, do you have the clip? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. I've got, got the, the clip, clip. Uh, right here. So, and this is a, actually a really good segue into what we're going to be talking about with this uh, bill that got squashed uh, in, in kind of a, a uh, yeah, a defeat like that just it didn't feel right. And this is this is why he was out there shouting about being a liar. So let's have a look at this clip here. Mr. Speaker, I know for a fact that farmers are asking that minister to axe the carbon tax. That PM promised that the Senate would be independent, but the actions this past week proved that that is a complete farce. We know he bullied his senators. The PM himself was on the phone over the weekend telling them they had to gut Bill C-234. The Prime Minister lied and his minions continue to lie about whoa, whoa. <laughs> and so immediately it erupts and they and they all get angry one side's cheering this is this passive aggressive thing that parliament always does in my opinion yeah Where they know the rules but they have to say the thing right Order. <laughs> getting upset Order. The honorable member who got here at the same time I did knows full well that you can't use that word. I would say the honorable member should retract that and apologize. The honorable member of Battle River Crowfoot. Mr. Speaker, I will not apologize to that Prime Minister when he continues to lie about the impact of the carbon tax and the so-called independence of the Senate. I'm asking the honorable member 
to apologize for the second time and retract. Okay, without going full into it, he doesn't retract it. He gets he kicked out he of the house. He didn't apologize. And that's it. Yeah. He has to go home for the day. Oh, boo-hoo. Uh, I don't think he should have apologized. <laughs> Trudeau did lie. No, no. He said he was going to have the most transparent government. He said he was never going to interrupt the the you know the sanctum sanctimony of of the the Senate and their independence. And uh, well, there he did. He did him and his uh, his lapdog Gibo, uh, the yep. his uh, his climate priest. I mean, for lack of a better word, and that's that's what happened. And it, like, it actually got really bad to the point where uh, Pierre Poly have actually had some words, and I have a clip of that because I, I wanted to get into this because uh, I don't know if you saw this yet, um, but this clip's actually quite good. At late yesterday. There were those liberal senators who had received personal calls from Justin Trudeau, intimidating calls from a prime minister who claimed that he would respect this, the independence of the Senate, has now stepped in to make sure not only that Canadians continue to pay the tax, but that it goes higher and higher still. Well, I've got news for Justin Trudeau. Mm. You've ruined Christmas for Canadians. Common sense conservatives are going to ruin your vacation as well. We are going to put in thousands of amendments at committee and in the House of Commons, forcing all night round the clock voting to block your $20 billion of inflationary spending and the rest of your economically destructive plans until you agree to our demand to take the tax off farmers, First Nations, and families. You will, no, you will have no rest until the tax is gone. It gets better. It gets better. <laughs> so they have their applause here, and then he gives uh, a direct statement here. Mr. Trudeau, you're going to have to come to terms with something. Over the Christmas period, whether through a walk in the snow or while you're sitting next to a warm fire, think about this reality. There will be a carbon tax election. I will win the carbon tax election, and whether you like it or not, I will ax the tax. Here, here. He should. That's that's really good, and those are some strong words. Uh, not just a threat, but uh, saying we promise that this is what's going to happen. You are going to lose the the next election, but in the in the meantime, we're going to ruin your Christmas. We're gonna we're gonna put all through our, well, all these motions and and stifle them up and make them stay in Parliament. Well, I mean, there's so much to unpack there. Let's, you know, first of all, let's go back to why the MP was calling Trudeau a liar. Um, you know, it, it's 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 all related to the carbon tax. So there was a bill in front of the Senate. So a bill made its way through the parliament, which is interesting because it was a bill sponsored by the Conservatives and the NDP voted with the Conservatives. So it made it through parliament and it went to the Senate. And the bill was simple. It's not about repealing the whole carbon tax. It's about repealing some carbon tax um, uh, as it applies to farming, you know, taking away the carbon tax on diesel used by farmers for the driving their tractors and stuff like that. And uh, it looked like it was going to be defeated by the Senate because after it passes the House of Commons, then it goes to the Senate. And and then, it, like they said, Trudeau twisted arms and the Senate um, uh, defeated the bill. So it's like, wow, you know, he's he's interfering in all the wrong ways. I mean, what what a small gift, you know, everybody's complaining about inflation and the cost of living and everything else. If I was Trudeau, I would have, that, that, that's an easy one. I would have said, ah, you know what, I'll temporarily lift uh, the carbon tax, but he, but he refused to do it. And, um, and and uh, uh i was losing I, I just lost my thought <laughs> no no it's fine but yeah he's he's yeah. he's really backed himself into a corner with the carve outs that he gave to the the maritime provinces with with, with the carve outs and as soon as that was yeah. on the table then it's on the table everywhere it's on the table everywhere and because it's not being given to any other canadians it's definitely of political nature this is why why the carve out came out it was because he was losing in the maritimes well guess what he's losing everywhere else now and the the canadian <laughs> public don't want trudeau anymore even even hardened no. like liberals that i know from out west here they're all saying get rid of him i want him out i want i i you know I, everything's costing too much money and this is really going to come down to cost of living in the, in the next election. Um, but at the same time, 
is it is it soon enough? Is it soon enough? Because um, what what are we going to do with interest rates? Um, well, yeah, well, I, I you know I I don't the 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 cost of living is not coming down. The interest rate, I I think the interest rates should have been increased, but the that that's the other news that happened today. This morning, the Bank of Canada decided to hold its interest rate at five percent. You know, is that a small Christmas gift? Eh, perhaps. I, I think it was uh, actually. I think it's proof more. Uh, it is proof of of political interference. I mean, the Bank of Canada should not be. Well, let's 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 go back. So the Bank of Canada right now is supposed to be. It, it's a crown corporation, but it's supposed to act at arm's length from the government. Mm -hmm. In and inflation is sky high, and and inflation might have come down a little bit last month. Uh, not enough to be, you know, not enough to say, hey, it's it's over and done with. The best tool the Bank of Canada has to fight inflation is to increase the interest rates. And they haven't done that now for three months in a row. And today, or three months in a row, more than three months in a row. And today, when they said they're not doing it, they gave this really convoluted excuse, right? They said, um, uh um, Canada looks like it's entering a recession. Okay. But then they said, in the same sentence, the U.S. are firing on all cylinders, but we think the the U.S. are going to enter a recession in the near future. I mean, it you know they're sending a mixed signal, but I'll say this: behind the scene, I went and looked at the Bank of Canada's um, third quarter financial results that came out on November twenty fourth with absolutely zero fanfare, and the Bank of Canada's lost has written off four point three billion dollars in losses in the first three quarters of this year the bank's never even had a loss in its 87 year history and now it has 4.3 billion in losses and so the bank should be it needs to increase interest rates to cover this loss and to help the economy but it didn't so again you got trudeau so you got trudeau interfering in all the worst ways he's interfering with uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's interfering with the senators. And as far as I'm concerned, he interfered with the Bank of Canada. He called Tiff Macklin and said, you know, do me a favor and don't increase interest rates until the new year. And you and I know that's just delaying the inevitable. That's just making more pain. That's saving. Sure, it's, you know, do I feel bad about somebody potentially losing their home? And in in, yeah, I, we all do, right? Yeah, absolutely. But, but, but this is, this is, you know, it, it, it's like, do we hurt 10,000 people with who potentially lose their mortgage in the next six months? Or do we continue to do this and hurt 20 million Canadian for a decade to come? I, you know, I, I, I hate to sound insens insensitive, but the Bank of Canada is, is failing us right now. There are certain people time. in the housing market that I don't feel very sa sad for. You know, there's a lot of people that bid up the price of houses in a speculative way. They were doing uh, you know, unsavory practices that were bidding up basically homes for average people by by playing the flipping game. You know, th there was TV shows made about it. Everybody's yeah, getting yeah, rich yeah. quick. I'm going to retire just on the equity that that I built up in home buying. This 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 was a get rich quick scheme, and a lot of people are stuck in it. And that that's that's where the malinvestment came in in this whole thing. I just did a video yesterday yeah. talking about malinvestment, what it means what it actually is, the, the Austrian uh, School of Economics, their thoughts on it. So I put this tweet out today or yesterday saying, uh, unpopular opinion, the Bank of Canada needs to raise the interest rates much higher, but are caving to political pressure. Our economy needs a Band-Aid rip. This is like, get it off. Uh, we need to move past. There are too many malinvestments. The capital needs to be liquidated keeping the rates at 5% is just prolonging the pain. This is, yep. we're, we're, we're at a point where we're in economic purgatory and we're not gonna get through this until those malinvestments are reliquidated. The, the assets get put back into the marketplace where you know more sound investors will be taking that those assets and putting them into real capital, not consumption items like, like houses and things like that that should be much lower priced and and put it into you know industry um making things make widgets make energy make yep. anything yep. no no it it, it it has to be it has to be multi-pronged approach very rapidly in the next you know six months i mean the bank of canada needs to increase the interest rate 
I, I like hearing what uh, Pierre said, like, you know, the, the, the government in their uh, fall economic update announced $20 billion in extra spending already on top of like the ridiculous amounts. We need to we need to rein that in. Like we need to totally rein that in. We need to um, we need to curb immigration. That's an easy one to me. I mean, no, can like what Canadians going to mind that we close the door temporarily and don't let everybody in, you know, we'll let you in eventually. Like we said last week, yeah, sure. we, we're immigrants, we're a nation of immigrants, but we can't let you in just right now. And then, and then we need to build houses. And that was another joke, right? Like, I mean, building houses is not that complicated. I don't know why I, you know, I don't know why building houses is, is so complicated, but, um, it shouldn't be, but then when you listen to uh, Jagmeet Singh this week talking about building houses, I'm like, oh, okay, maybe. It <laughs> I thought it was simple, but uh, he thinks it's way too simple. You know, Jagmeet Singh's. We, uh, you, uh, you did a video on that one. Let's. Uh, I, I did do a I, video I, I, on that one. I, I don't have the clip handy, uh, but yeah, it, it was yeah. ridiculous. Jagmeet Singh, uh, his his idea. I actually do have the clip. <laughs> I'm gonna pop this up because this is just so ludicrous that this is the thought process. Play thirty of, seconds of a grown man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. About five, four hundred and eleven homes. Only thirteen percent of them are affordable, and this is on public land. So they're using public land to build homes, which is a great idea, but only thirteen percent are affordable. So then what so do you want them to do differently? We want hundred percent of the homes to be affordable. If you're gonna build land or build home on public land. Every single one of them should be affordable. How uh, in my video, I went on to say, you know, hey, Mr. Home Depot guy, can you just start stocking the affordable lumber? Because um, yeah. I'm tired of you buying all this expensive <laughs> lumber, you know, and go on and on and on. Because, I mean, you can't just say, you know, I mean, what a great idea, right? Let's just build affordable homes. Let's stop making these really expensive <laughs> ones. I mean, we're talking about a market where the average townhouse in my in my town, which is not a big town, the average townhouse is a million dollars. A million dollars for a, 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 a three-bedroom townhouse, 1.5 bathrooms on on uh, attached to another house. I mean, this is this is where we're at. You can't just <laughs> by decree make make affordable houses. This is a, an economy where everything's been bid up, and largely because of the addiction that we have to low interest rates. It, 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 it. I mean, I'll tell you, I'm glad I'm not a politician, but if I was a politician, yeah, you, this is where they have to make the unpopular decisions. And the unpopular decisions are you got to um, ease up on the regulations that apply to building houses, cut down, cut the immigration, um, lower the spending and promote other sectors. I mean, one of the super fast ways that, again, they can get us out of this trouble. Everybody's worried about, um, what's the word, uh, austerity measures, right? We don't need austerity measures. Like we can, we can, yeah, we, we can cut back on government spending, but we can shift it over and let the industry and the private sector take over the slack. I mean, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Look at what's going on at COP28 this week, right? We got we got people that are, we got Elizabeth May at COP28. Did you see the picture of her? She's holding a sign that says, um, you know, no carbon storage. Like she, they're against every solution, every, every imaginable solution, they're against it. So Any, you know, anything that industry is. has come up with to actually follow through with what it is that they're asking for. They're like, no, yeah, that's yeah. not the way I want it yeah. done. I want it. Yeah, done we want you to you... reduce emissions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We want you to reduce emissions. OK, we'll do carbon injection. No, that's not going to work. OK, we'll do. No, that's not going to work. And they'll keep changing the goalposts. So, you know, um, well, it's hard to believe yeah, that, they, 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 that there's no other option except that they want industry gone out of the country. They're they want trying... industry gone. They want. I, I don't know what their end game is. Yeah, we we keep coming back to this one. I mean, they 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 truly act like they're uh, it, trying to implement somebody else's agenda. That that like yeah. I mean, and and they get oh, now I'm, I'm losing my thoughts. I mean, well, was it, was you it, said it, you you know, brought it up to me and yeah. you said I don't know what their end game is. And I shared this yeah. meme. Uh, on on my channel just the other day because uh, I got to show this. Uh, there's uh, there's no climate change in China because China is already communist. Uh, 
<laughs> it's like, well, yeah. what is the end goal other than socialism? This is the whole thought behind uh, Stephen Harper when he said that climate change was is, is a socialist plot. It's it's the, the watermelon theory, right? By uh, I think it's James Dilmore, where he said uh, these climate activists. They, they pretend to be green, but they're just red on the inside. That's really what it comes down to. That's their actual plan uh, in this whole thing is to bring about. Well, a and, state. And, you know, that cartoon has Stephen Gilbo. So he's in he's in uh, he's at COP28 right now. And then Gilbo is is announcing legislation in in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai that he hasn't even announced in Canada. Yeah. Like that's insane. Like that's, that's, you know, he's going there and he's announcing these, um, these methane cuts. So now it's not even, eth it's not even carbon dioxide. Now they're going after methane. Right. And I tell people like, do you have any idea what that means? I mean, you're, you're, you know, leave your, leave your car parked in your driveway for all summer long with a full tank of gas and then check your tank of gas by the end of the summer. If you haven't driven it anywhere, it'll be your, your, your gasoline will have evaporated and they want to go after all of that, man. They want to like, what? Like he, they want nothing. They, 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 they want to put us back to the stone age. It's, it's, he, he's in trouble too. There's another well, one. That's, I mean, what that Gilbo, that's what that Sultan said. That we'll be in caves if they have their way. And that's, that's really what they're after. I mean, it's not just methane. Yeah. They're going after nitrogen. They're saying that it could be uh, evaporated and turn into nitrix oxides that end up in the, uh, in the atmosphere, which ends up as low hanging ozone. But I mean, how much of it is actually, how much is this uh, is actually happening? of what of nitrous oxides of the methane no. any of this stuff how much is it like we we got rid of a large amount of the nitrous oxides from with with good catalysts in, in automobiles we got rid of the, 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 a lot the, of the, the the trouble stuff and and we're, we're the, good the green now. are doing the, the, yeah, yeah the green people are doing mental gymnastics and flips every week i mean right now you know last right now i'm in calgary right now i'm you know i'm just on the outskirts of calgary we have no snow on the ground so uh, well, that's more climate change. I'm like, no, it's not. It's a Chinook, man. We got we got a nice warm wind that came in, and I'm enjoying it. I get to go for a walk without freezing to death, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Gilbo Gilbo's in trouble. Well, not in trouble, but I mean, he's he, he's acting on his own because there's no way he's collaborating with his other MPs. Like last week, he wasn't here in Alberta. Last week, it was uh, Freeland and others come to Alberta and announce, you know, stand side by side with Danielle Smith cutting the ribbon at a for a. Uh, for a plastics facility up in Fort Saskatchewan. I don't know how Gilbo, you know, if I, if I was at COP28 and he was spewing like he was about uh, cutting back greenhouse gases, I'd put him on the spot and say, well, weren't you promoting a, a plastics plant? And anyways, yeah, they're, they're, they're dropping into popularity and, um, well, and people are calling them out know, left, right and center. I mean, it's what 400,000 elites, go to the desert in the middle of winter so that they can all sit in air conditioning and 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 it, and gripe about us uh using our our trucks and our automobiles while they they flew uh, private jets to get there none of them even carpool like none of them no and 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 i'm kind of in the, i'm kind of wondering if abu dhabi or i keep saying abu dhabi it's not abu dhabi it's dubai but they're side by side they're they're emirates I'm, I'm I'm kind of wondering if they didn't play this. They they played this well. Kudos to them, right? They I mean they invited seventy thousand people. Is is Dubai really interested in uh, in reducing climate change? You know, yeah. I mean, you, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I well, no, you know, for one, it, but it, uh, but I'm it, sure it's a it's a playground of the rich and famous. It's kind of like Monaco. What do they do there? I mean, they got an indoor ski hill. They got islands built out into the ocean with billion dollar mansions. They got skyscrapers with pools. They have air conditioning. They they have they put you know how we warm up our pools in Canada. You know you put a little solar blanket on top of it and try and warm up your pool so you can go swimming in it. They cool their pools. They have pools in their backyards in Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and they have air conditioning running through their pools to cool their pools. <laughs> that whole Nate, that whole part of the world, like Dubai and Abu Dhabi, exists because of oil and gas. 
I think they're actually flaunting it right now. I mean, well, it's, it's, you know, it's uh, funny because it, it would be like having a burger joint and having a bunch of vegans call you up and say, we're yeah. going to have our vegan convention at your burger joint. Would you have us? Yeah. I, I would say, absolutely. Come on down. Absolutely. We'll serve you salads. Yeah, yeah. And then you come in yeah. and, and hate on burgers and hate on <laughs> eating and, and, meat. And, and I'm but, counting on the fact that the girl who's, who's organizing it brings her boyfriend and he's a, he's not a real vegetarian. So he's going to come over in my burger joint and he's going to have a burger. Absolutely. That's what's going <laughs> no on. Problem. No yeah, problem. Yeah. Come on over. No, no. I'll yeah. yeah well, I mean, Dubai had to do something because they were one up by their neighbors next door. I mean, Qatar put on a, Qatar put on a two billion billion dollar party this uh, last November, right? The World Cup. World Cup was a two billion dollar party um, paid for by 100 percent by revenue from oil and gas. They invited people from all over the world and threw a big giant party, built nine stadiums that were air conditioned. And now they're proceeding to take, them, you know, like for a party. Oh, it's unreal. And people go to Dubai. Like we, I mean, we we have our famous guy here in Calgary who was in Dubai. It's Dr. Joe Vipon, right? Dr. Joe made a, a name for himself during COVID as the guy who always walked around with the mask promoting whatever vaccines. Well, he's in Dubai now, shitting on Alberta. I'm like, come on, dude. You're you're. Well, well speaking of uh, shitting on things, uh, the French, the yeah. French, while their leaders are over in Dubai celebrating, well, they shit this. with class. Well, they, <laughs> <laughs> they do, and here they are. Their farmers are shitting all over yeah. everything uh, by by mulching it and sending it into uh, government buildings, saying, uh, "Forget it. Uh, we don't want your high taxes, and we're going to keep doing this until you stop." Uh, following the lead of the uh, the Dutch farmers. Which I think did a bang up job. Did a bang up job. And if it keeps happening in Canada, I wouldn't be surprised to see this kind of thing happening here. Uh, At least I would encourage it myself. (laughs) And I'd probably come out and join them uh, in applause, uh, vehement applause uh, for for that kind of thing. So what's he what's he spreading? Just sort of like uh, shredded uh, stuff. He's not. I think it's shredded hay and manure. I think that's... Uh, if it's manure, then I'm really happy. Good for him. Yeah, shoot some manure. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to mix it with the hay because uh, that really uh, that really makes it. Uh, uh, it aerates yeah, it. Yeah. It aerates it real nice. Gets that fragrance going. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. But that's the thing. They they just keep uh, they just keep at it and they keep doing what they're doing and they keep congratulating themselves. And it doesn't matter how bad a job they're doing. Politicians will just keep. Um, failing upwards, as they say, uh, the Bank of Canada, I'm sure they're going to be giving themselves uh, bonuses like they did last year after losing money uh, <laughs> this year, probably after losing almost $5 billion. And you know what? The CBC, the CBC is no stranger to this. They'll probably be giving themselves bonuses after laying off so oh, many people. of their workers. And uh, and that's, that's a big thing happening. Uh, but the spokesperson won't say that they won't be doing uh bonuses and this this is a clip that came out i just wanted to show this one because this is just fantastic uh justin trudeau's hand-picked cbc boss uh, asked if she'll keep paying bonuses while laying off uh, rank and file workers just listen to her jobs are being cut i again I, i'm not going to comment oh, on that. i'm curious about something I, i'm going to presume no bonuses this year i mean the canadian taxpayer federation said a Freedom of Information request showed 16 million were paid in bonuses in 2022. Can we establish that that is not happening this year? It's too early to say where we are for the, for this year. We'll be looking at that uh, like we do all our uh, line items in the coming months. So there's a there's a chance bonuses could still happen at a time when jobs are being cut. I, again, I, I'm not going to comment on something that hasn't been discussed at this point. So. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, let's unpack that for a quick second. So first of all, that's not just a CBC spokesperson. That's Catherine Tate. That's yeah. that's the president of the CBC. That's right. That's the president who so would also a, be, uh, a, you know, in line for bonuses. Sure. As well. Yeah. 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 But that, and then, and then she's being interviewed by Adrian Arsenault who works for the CBC. So this is, this should have been a, Tate went into what she probably thought was a friendly interview, but now Arsenault is, 
so I'm guessing Adrian Arsenal lost friends last week or this week. I mean, they laid off 10% of their workforce. So yeah. she's probably, Adrian Arsenal's probably not too happy. Wow, that's... Uh, well, she okay. lost friends on the top by, by, the way, by asking that question, that's for sure. Yeah, and by the way, Catherine, the answer to the question is no. Like, that's a, it's a simple no. Like, are, is there going to be bonuses? The answer is no. There's no bonuses this year. There shouldn't be... There shouldn't be bonuses at, at the Bank of Canada. I hope there won't be. Mm -hmm. I mean, they paid themselves about $27 million bonus last year. CBC paid themselves bonuses. And the other group that absolutely better not have bonuses is the Canada Home and Mortgage or CMHG. What does that stand for? Uh, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, which is uh, Crown Corporation. Really doing a bad job. One job. Yeah. The Crown Corporation's number one job is to make sure life and housing is affordable for Canadians. So there's some guy in there whose de job definition says, make housing affordable for Canadians. Well, buddy, like you failed. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, you absolutely there's no failed. bonus. You, you shouldn't get a yeah. bonus. You should, you should get fired uh, for the, and, the and, bad job that you're doing. Yeah. And, and, and I worked in the private sector where we had bonuses. I get that. And, you know, and one of the, um, one of the things that when, when we had bonus, uh, programs is that, yeah, there's some employees who you could sort of argue, you know, if you're the mail clerk, your influence on the bottom line of the company is pretty minor. Mm -hmm. And so should your bonus be scrapped? Cause that, that employee usually has something else, you know, make sure you're the best mail delivery guy in the world and, and you'll get your bonus. But we're at a point right now where I don't give a shit. If you work for the CBC, CMHC, Bank of Canada, you can't convince me that anybody in those organizations is entitled to a bonus. They're, like if I find out that that's no, that's, you know, and how many billions well, we'll of see. dollars I mean, did the CBC get from the government? I mean, one point, well, listen, the CBC gets 1.2 straight up. That's what they get as a crown corporation. So that's the, because CBC is a crown corporation. They get 1.2. Then the rest of the media get about 600 million spread around them. During the last fall economic update, they announced another 128. And then you saw last week, Bill C-18 did work a little bit for the uh, liberals because Google backed down a bit and, and Google, um, agreed to paying a hundred million. So, you know, what are we at? We're talking the Canadian mainstream media is subsidized to the tune of $2 billion a year, $2 billion a year. And they still can't compete with guys in their, in their foyer with the camera on the internet. Well, yeah. We're, we, we provide way. Yeah. Like it's, it's insane. It's insane. It's, it's unreal to me. It's, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'll take to a chunk of that. Like I'm, I'm looking For at sure. the calculator, like, Two billion dollars by forty million people. That's eighty dollars a person. So let's let's you know, I'd rather give my eighty bucks to you than to the CBC and everybody else. But it you know, <laughs> it, it is what it, Well, I'd rather it go to the national debt. I'd rather it just go to paying off yeah. the debt and not and not to funding some service that we don't want or need anymore. It's obsolete. It's we call it legacy media for a reason, dinosaur media, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't yeah. compete in the open market if you can't survive go away that's really what it comes down to we don't need you we don't want you yeah no no and, then, and you know they're going to argue that uh well we need it you know we need a a national broadcaster for whatever reason i'm like eh, then let's have a, a private one i mean if somebody wants Absolutely. if we need one somebody else fill the need that's uh i'm not worried about that no you know and, yeah and there's We're, all kinds of things we can obviously cut as well and then actually one of the, the, the maybe this will be segue into something else but one of the arguments about um the cbc is that it provides french services and i'm like well then so? then create something called uh, quebec bc or whatever you want to call it you know qbc and they can they can create their own broadcasting system I well really, they do they already yeah, have it it's called radio canada yeah. Yeah, but that's an arm of the CBC. That's the CBC in French. So there should yeah. be a Radio Quebec, and they should have their own thing. Well, uh, Quebec can pay did you for see that, the... not Canada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was that? Was that? Did we talk about this last week, or did it happen after last week? Did, did that whole? Um, oh, we never got to talk outrage. about it. Yeah. Okay, we didn't get to talk about this. I did talk about this yeah. on my live stream. I I yeah. I went off. I <laughs> I didn't. I was no holds bar. Uh, that fake outrage was really. It was relentless, but it was. It came to a point uh, for me where you know I'm not an. I'm not a francophone. I don't ever pretend to be. I know you are, but you don't pretend to be yeah. some. You know, pearl clutching. Uh, uh, think about I'm the, the French about children. It. I, I, 
Um, no, no. But I, I found it actually deeply offensive uh, on, on from my perspective uh, to, to come out and, and play this game like we're all supposed to be offended. By the way, uh, for those that are just tuning in and don't know the uh, what actually happened, um, I'll, I'll show the clip Minutes, here. Please. This this is the clip of what Rachel Thomas said in a, a segment. It was this was a committee uh, looking into the the CBC. Actually, it was it was the the C eighteen garbage, and um, this this is what was said from Rachel Thomas. Mrs. Thomas, thank you, um, Minister. I I noticed that you answer my questions in French, but other English questions you answer in English if they're from your Liberal colleagues. Um, I realize it's completely your choice. We're a bilingual country. Um, but if at all possible, I would, I'd love to have it. Yeah. And then everybody had a freak out and they, and, and totally. like, 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 a, 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 an Italian soccer game, everybody was, oh, whoa, taking dives. They're falling over. Yep, yep. They're upset. Even the, even the guy in the room that couldn't speak French, he was upset over it, but he wanted to say his piece point of order point of order and it no and, and 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 the liberals and the media tried to again to to i call it fake outrage i mean i wasn't outraged by it in fact i i thought it made the french minister look bad i i said that publicly i said it on twitter like i thought i thought rachel's request was valid mm -hmm. she didn't demand to be answered in english she simply said very polite possible. very polite very actually. polite and and then people said oh she, you know it's colonialism and everything else i mean they went over the top with this one which is again it's a liberal strategy of divide and conquer and so french versus english is a very strong wedge that they have you know it, it's it's either referred to as French versus English or Quebec versus rest of Canada. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. it's a great wedge that the Liberals love to use. But uh, yeah, he, I mean, he's he they're they're losing, losing, losing. I mean, they you know um, we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm still hopeful. I'd love to see that petition. I think we talked about that petition last week. That that petition to um, to to force a confidence vote in the House of Commons is now up to 200,000 people. Some of your readers or some of your viewers were great. They said that the the threshold is like uh, 100,000. So that petition is way past the threshold. So it will get presented to the House of Commons. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's active until, you know, around Christmas time. I'd, can you imagine if, if, if the government was presented a petition with, let's say, I don't know, 500,000 names and ignored it? That's, that's you know, and, and they'll ignore it. I have no idea. I have well, no doubt that even... So that, from what I know, heard, it, only, <laughs> only 500 signatures needs to actually be submitted for them to even bring it to the floor. Here Here's what's yeah. going to happen. They're going to bring it to the floor. They're going to vote it down. Um, but totally. but but the good part about it is, you know, two hundred thousand some odd Canadians got together and then they just voted down. They just eh, don't care about what two hundred thousand Canadians have to say. And it'll sh it'll just show it'll go to prove to more people that they really don't care. They're they're they're. They, they're just going to do side what they of the want. House, Mr. Speaker, on this side of the house, we don't care about petitions. That's fine. Just you know, as long as you say it. <laughs> but you you did yeah. get into the French thing, and I I I wasn't yeah. I wasn't quite done with that one because I wanted to show the clip. Uh, and this is where it offended me because a lot of um, a lot of the back and forth with French Canadians is uh, you know um, you you have to respect the the bilingualism thing, and um, the the at the end of the day what what all of the outrage came to for me was a bunch of uh, people saying that if someone asks you to speak another the other language that's absolutely rude and you should never be compelled to speak the language that is is not of your choosing um now this doesn't happen from the other side of the aisle uh we have people asked all the time whether or not they can speak in french whether they can answer a question in french and they're mocked openly journalists do it all the time journalists are very uh open about doing that they'll ask questions in English and ask or in French and ask the person to answer in both languages. But yeah, but there's this double you, standard. You, and and I wanted to show this clip of Trudeau. And I know you've seen this. I one. found that. Well, I found that clip. I, I was one of the guys who went and dug up that clip and put it out there pretty quickly. Is that the one where yeah, the I got it from you? Asking? I got Yo, it from you. But yeah, I want to yeah. show the oh, audience yeah. this because this one is actually yeah. quite outrageous. Funding for psychiatry and mental health services have been grossly underfunded compared to the other areas of health care. Of particular concern in this area are services to minority populations. 
Most of the public services in this area are available in French only. It is only in the last 10 years that we have had a group dedicated to trying to help the English population in this area. I would really appreciate your comments on this subject. Merci. Thank you. Um, si vous permettez, je réponds en français pour que tout le monde puisse entendre. Uh, mais uh, merci de votre utilisation de nos deux langues officielles au, au, au pays. Uh, mais uh, on est au Québec, donc je vais répondre en français. Um, so uh, the, the that clip makes ends me there. It's sick. It's that sickening. That makes me so mad. It's, it's, it's disgusting because, um, yeah, so, so when Rachel Thomas asked a question in a parliamentary committee, the answer to her is whoever in parliament, in government business, you're allowed, you know, people can answer in either language. But in Trudeau's example, he's the prime minister of the country. And there's an expectation that the prime minister of the country will be bilingual. There's actually an expectation that all politicians will be bilingual, but there's absolutely an expectation that the prime minister will be bilingual. And the prime minister Sh needs to be bilingual so he can answer questions in either or language without the help of a translator. So when that lady asked, a, so that la that question, that tra that interaction was in Quebec in 2017 on the campaign trail. She's an Anglophone in Quebec, which is a minority, and she asked a question about mental health and minority rights, and he answered her in French. Yes, that is a double standard of the most disgusting kind possible, and I I. I, I was appalled when he did that, and I dug up that video as soon as that outrage broke earlier this week to show people that you're playing this bullshit game. That What Trudeau did there, that's truly disgusting. Yeah, it was disgusting because she clearly laid out in her question that she was unable yeah. to understand French, and then he answered her question in French, which is, and, I, and it's intentional. It's intentional. A, it was intentional because he was trying to score points in Quebec. He apologized for that afterwards, which is classic Trudeau, right? Because when called out, he'll apologize. He never apologizes on the spur of the moment. He always apologizes when he's called out. But the other thing he said is, he said something along the lines of, well, I was in Quebec and the majority language there is French. So therefore I should have, I, I answered in French. I'm like, okay, well then based on that, same thing. Quebecers are 20% of the population. So maybe maybe we should have a rule that in the House of Commons, if there's more Anglophones than Francophones, should we always go by majority? So he, 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 like liberals love to do that. They love to do the mental gymnastics and the double standards. And um, that, yeah, Trudeau's done. He's, 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 God, I, please give me a Christmas <laughs> present. Give me a snowstorm and send him on a walk in the snow. Send please. him on a walk. Well, yeah, we need to have those, uh, those white Christmases. That's why he's got the carbon tax. Yeah. So he could possibly go on one of those walks in the uh, snow. Because uh, that's what he's geez. doing to save us from all this. Marty, Marty, where can yeah. people find you? Uh, Marty up north on uh, Twitter and Marty up north on uh, on uh, YouTube. On Twitter, it's pure blood sport like you and I are doing. <laughs> on on YouTube, I'm a little more a little more subdued. I, but you know what? I mean, let's close it this way. I, I, I could you sit? Could you be in the House of Commons? Could you, Clyde, be in the House of Commons and ask Trudeau a question and keep your calm while he's answering? I lose my shit. I, I'm gonna be straight. You'd up lose you. your shit. Yeah. I'd lose my shit too. That's why you and I do this. We lose our shit here, but we don't lose our shit in the House of Commons. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, and, and thank you guys for joining us every week on these chats. I yeah, uh, really yeah. appreciate it. Uh, definitely go check out Marty. Uh, he's got a big, big following on, on Twitter. And uh, go, yeah. go watch his walks. Do you do any walks in the snow on, on YouTube? I do. Oh, no, no. I, I hike year-round, man. Hike in the snow. I, I, I'm the crazy guy who uh, who goes camping without a stove, just a sleeping bag when it's as cold as minus 30. Wow. Wow. Yep. Well, go check that yep. out. Yep. And uh, we'll definitely see you next week. We'll do this all once again. All right, Clyde. Cheers. <laughs>